Hi guys, we are here today for our first virtual artist studio tour with Carol Oldenburg. We are at OMG Studios. So we're walking in here. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Thanks. So we're going to hear from Carol today, look at some of her artwork, and um, hear some of her stories about her pieces. Hello everybody. Good to see you. Um, welcome to my studio. This is our space at 57 East King Street in the Royal Square District. Um, we've been here almost four years. So I have a studio, my daughter has a studio, and our friend Cheryl has a studio in this uh, building. Very cool. Which is very cool. We each have our own space. I can't believe you guys have been here four years already. It's like flying by. <laughs> Time is flying by. I know. <laughs> Very cool. You guys can check out. If you haven't been here before, um, this space is always, we were just talking about this, I feel like it's it always looks different, you know, depending on what they're working on and what pieces they have and who's in the in the space. And uh, earlier today, this we space... We things around. Yeah, things get moved around. <laughs> so uh, this piece caught my eye, and Carol, I was wondering if you could tell me about this piece, especially this little cutout guy, <laughs> which is really cool. This so, was a, a, a piece called, well, I love doing clouds. And sometimes I just want to do something completely different. So um, I started doing all the drips and it was called, it's called peace and love. Okay. And Sanskrit symbols for peace and love. So um, love shows, but peace is under the cloud. Oh. And we were having a jewelry show here, a little trunk show, a um, year or so ago. And this piece was on the wall and all the jewelry was out there and there was candles lit and one of the candles fell into the painting. Oh my gosh. So it was on fire. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, well, did you paint over the where it burnt the canvas? Because you can't even tell that it was no, burnt. No, that's so, what this black, oh, that's streak the black is. Oh my that's gosh, that's what the black streak is. And I thought, that's well, crazy. okay, wow, the gods have spoken. <laughs> Peace and love is not to be. I put the little soldier in there and just let it go. That is so cool. So it's still a fun piece. It is. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the colors. Yeah, it's me gorgeous. too. It's not my usual colors or a landscape, no. and so I just, I just was having fun. Yeah, I mean, talk about okay. Talk artists about you. just want to have fun. Artists just want to have fun. <laughs> I I think it would be helpful for everyone to know like, um, what your work, how your work has changed. It's changed a lot in the past few years. You've been doing a lot of different things. Absolutely. So, um, like some earlier work, like. I don't I just, even know, I don't know if there's anything's... much earlier here. Yeah, it's not a new stuff I used to do, um, over here. Well, I used to do a lot of portrait work. Um, yes. In the, in, uh, you know, 30 years ago, it was all, almost all portraits and no landscapes. And then I okay. did a show house, and they asked me to do a something in a bathroom. And I did a landscape and went, this is fun. Big brushes. Yeah. You know, I just had a lot of fun with it. So that was the start of landscapes. And okay. I've gone on from there, and then they've the landscapes have changed. Um, in the last couple years, I've started adding palette knife and a little more texture and a little more paint. I've always been very thrifty with my paint. <laughs> um, it was once said to me, Carol, the object is to use paint, not save paint. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to use paint. I still yeah. don't use much paint, but that's yeah. just the way I paint. So, oh, very cool. So. That's it. So let's see. This is um, what I'm currently working on. Okay. I've been doing for the last uh, year and a half or so, I've been doing a series on the confluence of the Susquehanna at the Juniata. Okay. And have hiked up on the Appalachian Trail to get photographs in winter, spring, summer, fall. Um, so this one is, this was actually a probably a spring photograph that I turned into a winter uh, oh, wow. scene because cool. I, I the winter one I had done and I just loved it I loved the pictures I loved you know everything about it mm -hmm. so I had we went hiked to this power cut so this is the Juniata mm -hmm. and the Susquehanna and they meet over here 
which you can see in the painting to the right, you can see the confluence of where they, okay. where they meet. Yes, okay. Um, and then up on the wall up above is no, to the right okay. over here. That's the spring. Um, and you can't see the confluence itself, but you see both rivers and all the color. Yeah. Um, so that, that spring, the one to your left here is summer, which I'm still working on. So I'm lush. still, you know, I thought I had it where I wanted it, and then I decided I didn't. I didn't really like these branches up here, so I'm gonna paint those out. Okay. And we'll see what happens with that. And then, and then this one, which is just the power cut. Um, I don't know. We'll see where this one goes. Yeah. So. For um, everyone always said, I feel like everybody always said, how long does it take you to create one of these paintings? I know it's diff I know it's going to be different for probably each piece, but um, yeah, I know, you and it's a process. So uh, I think a lot of people yeah. think about, oh, artists just kind of whip it up and they're done, <laughs> and that's not the case. Not, typically, not true. <laughs> um, sometimes you know, like like the right hand one, the summer one, mm -hmm. I thought was finished. But then as it hangs in the studio, I might decide, mm, no, I don't like that, and, and need to work on it more. So mm -hmm. sometimes things could take a couple years yeah. I mean, until yeah. they're really finished. Mm -hmm. um, I'll think they are, but then they aren't. They're yeah. just kind of like waiting for me to get the next inspiration and say, no, this is not, not where I want it to be. And sometimes, I think there was one that I had that I kept trying to do the view from Turkey Point, looking out over Lake Clark and, mm -hmm. and Long Level, and I kept yeah. trying to do it and changing things and changing things. And finally, one day, I was so frustrated with it, I just painted over the whole, the wow. whole bottom. Yeah. Of it. I just wow. and then I went, oh, okay, this was supposed to be a beach scene, <laughs> 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 and, then, and then it sold. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome. That's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's so awesome. I think they, you know, I think some of the, the little karma of a painting or whatever is, it really has to be finished before it sells. And yeah. even though I think it might be finished, you know, there's something in there bugging me, like, no, not yet, not yet. So, right. anyway, that's, so those, those are the, the confluence series on. that have uh, kind of taken me for the last year or so mm -hmm. and that was all because I saw a picture in the newspaper um, from the top of uh, whatever the name of the mountain is up above Harrisburg and said oh. ooh ooh I love that I have to paint that and, <laughs> and that was it and awesome. then I said oh I have to go there I have to do it in every every um... oh my god I lost my words <laughs> Every season, yes, oh, every season. Oh, yeah, so yeah. then, you know, I grabbed my boyfriend and said, we have to go, you know, this is probably the last snow of the season. And we hiked up the zigzag trail, I think it's about four miles, to get to the point where I could see. And it was, it went from being maybe 40 degrees to being 20 degrees the day we hiked. Wow. It was frigid <laughs> and windy. And he was such a good sport uh, and said, okay, we can do this. Oh my goodness. That's but great. I got great pictures and, yeah. and a beautiful canvas out of it. So, awesome. Yeah. So, so that's that. I'm wondering, and you may not even know, how many pieces of work have you sold over the years? I couldn't tell you. I know. That. I was like, you oh, probably yeah. don't even know. Hundreds Because I know there's tons. Yeah. I mean, that I know that you Hundreds of portraits. Sold. Yeah. Um, just hundreds of portraits. Because you've so done commission doing, work and yes. that's what you started with. I started initially. with portraits. I sold my first portrait in 1976. Wow. I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> I was still in college. Okay. And uh, sold my first portrait wow, and cool. then went on from there. And where did you study? I studied at Kutztown <laughs> State College, now Kutztown University. Yeah. And um, I was encouraged to do go to other schools um, Philadelphia University of Michigan and I just was kind of oh, no, I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to go there I, you know yeah. I don't want to live in a city you know and I went to someone just offhand 
said, uh, Kutztown has a good art department. Okay, I'll apply there. Yeah, and they do uh, still. Yeah, yeah. They have a great, and so great I was accepted, a late accept, acceptance um, into the school, but not the art school. And then I went up with my portfolio, and they said, "Yeah, we've had a couple people drop out. You can, you can apply." So then I, that's how I got into Kutztown. Wow. And I loved it. Oh, it was the great. perfect place for me. I still awesome. still have friends from when I was there, and. Um, yeah, it was great. I don't know that I got the the best all around education because in the seventies it was a lot of um, abstract expressionism, so there was uh, a lot of do your own thing oh, sort of stuff. Yeah, and only yeah. a few teachers really taught fundamentals. Yeah, and so, but that allows you to develop your own style. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. 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 It wasn't. It wasn't so rigid where you were kind of trapped in a. Yes. What you had in a to, in a program, that. which yeah, you know, then you go. So either way, you're either in a program that you're really disciplined and you learn uh, technique, or you're in a program that lets you think. Right. And come up right. with your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which was probably the better program for me anyway. Yeah. 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 Being rebellious and you're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so after you graduated college, did you then come back to York or where, what did you, what, what was your I next, do? what was your next step? What did I do? Oh my gosh, I was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> what I, think. I lived, um, I lived in Allentown for a little while. I was a night security guard. Oh wow. Yeah. And then I was a a sales girl at Bamberger's. Okay. And then I was a waitress, and then I moved to Michigan. Um, oh, wow. And okay. worked at University of Michigan for a number of years in oh, different cool. positions. Okay. Um, learned electron microscopy. Uh, did a lot of photo developing for different grad students for the professors I worked for. Uh, worked in a biophysics lab. Okay. So I, I was learning a lot when I was there, which was very exciting, and then just doing the things I was good at, which was the photography and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, very It was cool. fun, and then I then I took off for a while and just kind of floated around yeah. and worried my parents. Uh -huh. And uh, which is what you didn't do lots of artwork, <laughs> but gained a lot of experience. And then yes. I would say I moved back to York. When was that? The late eighties for okay. a little while and then had a daughter and moved back to California oh. again and then moved back to York again and <laughs> stayed here. Yep. And now I've been here forever. Yeah. So yeah. awesome. I consider York home. Yeah. And how did you, I have to ask, um, how did you initially get involved with Creative York, which was back then York Arts uh, 30 years ago. So yes. I don't know how, what, at what so time you got ago, involved. Right away. Right away. So right, away. right away. Their first home. Um, I don't know what year they were incorporated. Was it? We are 1990. 1990. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So 1990, and they. I don't know that they had a home, but their first home was in the Pullman Building, which is now the Lofts. Oh. Okay. And I had decided at that point. I think it was probably 1990. I decided. Okay. Enough of this. BS, it's time to see if you really have what it takes to be an artist. Stop working another job, do your artwork, concentrate on that. Yeah. Okay, what do you need? I need a studio and I need a place to live. Mm -hmm. Within a week, someone had said, oh, there's a new place, York Arts, that's wow. opening uh, and they're renting studio spaces. Oh, so yeah. I went over there, rented a space. Cool. Got a place to live. I, you know, I went to uh, someone who had bought a house and want, needed someone to redo it. So I said, I'll redo it. Awesome. Give me a year rent free. And so she did. And I redid the house. I had the studio. It was great. And then I had Kara. <laughs> and blew oh, yeah. it all up. <laughs> <laughs> we know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. But she's been the best thing. I always say that she was... She was the lens that focused my, um, I guess, my resolve and my creativity and, and just like made me decide this is what I want to do and how I want to live. And, yeah. and to do that, I really need to knuckle down and be the and artist instead of just say I'm an artist. Right, yeah. exactly. Which I had been doing, but, you know... When you yeah. have to make a living but from when it, you, you start hustling. Yeah, it's a little bit different when you start having 
that. When you have a kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, um, yeah, yeah. Gotta provide. Yeah. Not just you. Yeah, I do. Which is awesome. And I have. And you and have. She's yeah, an and you have. Exactly. It's what despite me. You know, sometimes you have those moments well, um, yeah. over the years. You do this for 30 years, and there are moments where things are low, and you just, uh, it's it's difficult sometimes. Yeah. But, but, you know, that's where you learn to have faith. Right. Right. You and you, have faith. I mean, Carol's been so involved with York Arts, now Creative York. Um, I mean, she's been for, well, the past years. 27 years yeah. for Art and Residence. I mean... You sh uh, helped us hang that event, yeah. um, and yeah. now we're just kind of st starting to hand over the reins. Um, yeah, to some, we're getting old. Some, yeah. Going <laughs> up those ladders isn't so easy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean I, that's just I, and I've when you know me starting at the organization, I always yeah, I just thought this is what Carol's done forever, <laughs> just paint. <laughs> so it's fun to hear like uh, some of the early days. Yeah. Of what what yeah. you've done. Yeah. yeah. And I still uh, do portraits. Yeah, I do corporate yeah. portrait work and a lot of children's portraits. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just kind of do it. what takes my fancy. And yes. I think if I love it, it shows and yeah. goes out to the world that um, that I'm doing something I love. Mm -hmm. I've found that if I do something thinking, oh man, this is gonna, people are gonna love this, they're gonna buy them, they're gonna fly off the walls. Those are the things that sit. Huh, and interesting. Sit and yeah. sit. Yeah. Yeah. So. So now that you have a studio here at Royal Square, mm -hmm. OMG Studios, how has that changed? Has that changed as far as, I mean, you see people come in for here, first let's Fridays. let's get a different background. And, yeah, yeah, let's switch. <laughs> let's switch. Let's get a different background. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, for, I guess, how has that, ex how has that changed your experience as an artist having a studio open to the public? Because you have your own home studio as well uh, yes. that I've been to, um, but it's I'm sure totally it's, totally different um, downtown here. Well, I really like being downtown. I like pre-pandemic. Yeah, uh, right. Getting out and seeing people. It's been good for me to not be so isolated, um, and so I really I enjoy I enjoy that. It yeah. keeps my spirits up. Um, People come in mostly for First Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to have a place where someone says, I want to come in and see things. Okay, you know, book an appointment, and they come in, and they can look at everything in a in a lit space instead yeah. of my garage behind my house, which is also very cozy right. and nice. Yeah, it is. But um, it's, I love being here and painting here because it's spacious. Um, I have my, my big painting wall, and then I have my big display wall. Mm -hmm. um, we usually do a Christmas uh, Christmas open house, sort of we're open most of December every day, and have my mother's weaving and my daughter's work and her ornament business, and so we get a lot of people mm -hmm. in for that, which is very nice. Um, yeah. What else do you want to know? <laughs> Have you, being open downtown and you're interacting more with the public, have you, do you notice that you get more commissions that way versus um, in the past? I don't think so. Open? Not necessarily? I okay. don't think so. Most of the people that buy my work have been looking at my work for probably years and, okay. and said, okay, now I'm ready. Um, a few strangers will walk in and, and buy something, but mostly it's cards or or a little yeah. print or something like that. It's not, they aren't coming in and making the big, a major purchase. Yeah. Um, there's some people outside there. I was oh, just waiting should we? Yeah. <laughs> They're probably looking okay. at the classes. So we've also started doing um, pre-pandemic classes uh, yes. um, with Art Uncorked where people just bring their wine or whatever they want and then we do different things, alcohol links and paintings and just all kinds of stuff which have been great and we just got it going and then had to shut it down so yeah. we're hoping to get <clears throat> excuse me get that started again in the fall yeah but we just have to wait and see like everybody else what is going on right exactly 
how many people it's not as you can see it's not a big space so right it's right. hard to get people six feet apart and if you can only have say you know yeah. eight people yeah. in three different rooms it does not pay to right. do the to do the class right yes so. we hear we we understand that. yeah <laughs> yeah you understand that <laughs> yeah, very totally well i understand that um Back to artwork, a lot of times I do paintings from places that I've traveled. Mm -hmm. So this piece is from Avalanche Lake in um, Montana, Glacier oh, National right. Park, which I went to last summer. I had the good fortune to go out there with a group of Boy Scouts. And you may say, oh, 20 Boy Scouts and you on a bus? That doesn't sound so great. But <laughs> It was great. <laughs> they carried everything. They cooked oh, everything. Yeah. I got to sleep in a bed. I mean, it was it was <laughs> it was great. I was really spoiled by the time I got back. I didn't have to do anything. Wow, that's so nice. Yeah, and I got to see beautiful, fabulous places yeah. and take wonderful hikes. Um, so there's a couple pieces that I painted out there. I took my paints oh, along. Awesome. Okay. So that's a that top one is a the mule corral. Ah. Um, and so they, this, the place where we were camping, um, this is not in Glacier, this is in, at the bottom of the, uh, oh, the big reservoir out there. Now that one I did paint Get some close -up. at Glacier. Um, oh, that texture. Yeah. It's great. Uh, the, but the top one's where they outfit everyone to go into the bog. The Bob. The Bob. <laughs> the Bob, which is, <laughs> I'm starting to lose my words. I'm getting giddy. Uh, <laughs> so they have all these mule teams that go into the wilderness. Okay. And every every week they go into the wilderness to outfit the firefighters. Oh, okay. And trail people and, you know, people like that. So there's 60 some mules at this place. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, oh it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area. Nice. Yeah. So tell us about this piece. I know this is. Uh, I feel like when this piece hit the. That was that was probably my first so um, intrigued by it. My first one using the palette knife, and it's yes. a little bit more abstracted, um, and I really loved painting this. So this is a view from the Yorktown Hotel. Okay. And I've done a number of those pieces as well, yeah. but not as kind of crazy colored uh, right. palette knife, just having having fun with it. Yeah. Um, so this is a view looking out at the fire station down Duke Street. Um, this is now the Cantina and, and Avianos. Um, but yeah, that's so yeah. that's the story behind it. Yeah. So that was kind of the start of my palette knife painting and laying in some more color that way and edges and just having some more fun with it. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah, so it's really neat just to see the difference the difference yeah. in your work and how it's changed. And you know I'm I'm getting a little more abstract and that may have to do with my eyes getting worse. Us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. it's uh it, it's something new right and if you're doing art this long you have to challenge yourself you right know, I'm not someone who likes doing the same thing over and over and over and over mm -hmm. I don't right. like doing the same subject I don't like doing the same painting I like to challenge myself and a lot of times I think okay what happens if I use pattern with color with light you know that way yeah now it's texture yeah yeah it's great yeah beautiful Beautiful. Different angle here for everybody. It's a really fun space. Well, Carol, yeah. thank you for chatting thank with you. me and being our first artist to Ta -da. Um, let us tour yeah. your studio. And uh, yeah. yeah, and it's been it's been great. You know, like just coming in to see what what's new here and um, it's a lot of hearing fun. your story and and offering different. You know, I do big paintings. Yeah. I do small paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of is whatever takes my fancy and flower ones and landscapes and I don't know. Yeah. I just like, you know, you have different likes and you just go with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of stupid. 
<laughs> well, you go. I mean, what's how? How? What's going on, and how you feel? And yeah. I mean, I think you know. For me, your mood, your mood changes. So I think yeah. it depends. And spring, on too. it's like, okay, I want to paint flowers. They're all coming out. Yeah. And these little yeah, these lilacs little came out. I picked them in my house, and and then I had someone. I did one, and someone asked for two more. So yeah. those three are sold. Um, and I yeah. noticed. Uh, these little guys, this little guy over Yeah, there. that was a whole series I did this um, winter, just to get guys. some, I don't know, some, some brightness. Cute. Yeah. Very cool. And those are also good for galleries because uh, they're a lower price point. Right. So yeah. it's good for a gallery. And that's what I, I think I was thinking too. I mean, you have the huge pieces that are thousands, and then you have the smaller pieces so people yeah. can collect your work at different price points. Right. Which is, very exactly. helpful for those who can't get the thousand dollar ones. <laughs> yeah. So it's lovely. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Mom. everybody. <laughs> Hope to see you at Creative York. Yes. And, and OMG. Yeah, both places. You know, once you know everyone starts coming out and about. Right. Um, just so you guys know, we are doing a series next week. Uh, we're going to visit Ophelia Shambliss in her studio um, next Thursday. So stay tuned, That'll everybody. That'll be very good. Yeah. Bye.